How's everybody doing tonight? Tonight will be my 29th discussion. Tonight I'm speaking with Larry Everett of the amazing band Joshua Fit for Battle. Also, welcome to Play Gear. Two huge bands that I love and luckily I got to see a few times and uh, it was always a, a great time. Hope everybody's doing good. It's snowing in New Hampshire, of course. Again, uh, it'll be snowing Tuesday, then next Friday. Uh, I feel like every two, three days it's going to be snowing. So, um, oh, and I just wanted to say, um, rest in peace to Double K from People Under the Stairs. I'm a huge fan of People Under the Stairs. Um, their live show was unbelievable, uh, and it's just a huge, huge crush to me that Double K passed away last week. Uh, so rest in peace, Double K. Uh, go listen to People Under the Stairs if you haven't. Uh, they're fucking amazing. So, and also. Rest in peace to MF Doom. I've said it a bunch of times, but those two guys are unbelievable. So, um, I don't know. It's crazy. But hope everybody's doing good. Uh, hope everybody's wearing their masks. And uh, just wait for Larry to jump on here. I told him six. I jumped on early just to say <laughs> rest in peace, Double K and MF Doom. Frankie, what's up? How you doing, brother? I know it's not snowing there anymore, but it's still snowing in New Hampshire. Should take a couple seconds. <laughs> I hope so. Here we go. Larry, how you doing? Hey, how's it going? Good, good. Uh, I want to thank you so much for doing this and taking the time out to, you know, on a Sunday. Um, you know, I, I'm sure, you know, people do, you know, busy stuff on Sundays, especially if you're working all week. And I appreciate you taking an hour or so to, to talk with me. Absolutely, yeah. No, I got all my paperwork done before this, so it's good. <laughs> nice. Um, usually when I talk uh, to people, I just talk about like how they first got started in music and and how you were drawn to punk and hardcore uh and also where did you grow up when you were a kid um well i grew up in delaware um in newark like right around the university of delaware and uh i guess um i probably got into skateboarding before i got into punk and then it kind of just went from there like i think i uh got like the punk the first like punkorama comp from epitaph and just kind of uh went from there you know now were the the skaters that you were skating with like like punk and hardcore at that time yeah yeah for the um for the most part i mean we were like 15 or 16 years old so as much as that's possible in Delta, you know yeah yeah i always i always uh everybody always says they got into it through skateboarding or like reading thrasher magazine because they had the music session uh section in in thrasher magazine mm -hmm. yeah no beyond that uh i remember being in high school and like these kids i went to catholic school and i remember um these uh one of my friends in my class had like an initial heart attack and i think it was the one with like a dagger on the cover and it was just like it was so weird to see just like you know, vampires or whatever. Yeah. In this black and white print. Yeah. And me being 15 or 16 years old and being like, I don't know if this is real or like, you know? Yeah. Having no, having no, uh, having no preconceived notion of what was going on, you know? Now, did you dive into Ink and Dagger after you saw that or were you kind of just like spread out and kind of looked for all kinds of different kinds of music once you saw that? Oh, yeah, no, I definitely got into them, and I, I saw them, like, long after that. Um, were you into, like, rock and roll before um, that had happened, you know, or maybe heavy metal or something when you were younger than 14, 15? Um, I used to listen to a lot of rap music growing up, like, like going back to, like, fifth grade or so, like, walking around with, like, headphones on all the time. Um, but... I definitely, before that period, it was definitely like the Columbia House 
cassette scam yeah. thing. Yeah. Where, like, you know, it's like Nine Inch Nails and Ted and Dinosaur Jr. and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, what kind of hip hop were you listening to back then? Uh, like Public Enemy. And the other side had Two Live Crew, but I didn't, I didn't listen to that side much. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, so when did you start to um, think about getting into a band and, and and starting a band? Was there a band before Joshua Fit for Battle, or was that your first real band that you that you got into? That was definitely my first real band. Like we, uh, like me and friends of mine, used to like mess around in like a parent's basement with like a keyboard and like two pieces of a drum and maybe a guitar, and we would just like scream, you know and just pretend like we were in a band together <laughs> but no by like by seven age 17 like senior high school like we had finally been able to get into like somewhat of a serious situation with being in a band and was all the guys from joshua fit for battle uh from delaware were you guys all close uh in proximity to where you lived yeah yeah within like we all lived within like 15 minutes of each other for the most part and um so uh we, did you always want to be a front man and a vocalist? Uh, or were you scared the first time you kind of, your first show? Now, how did things like kind of happen as you guys went on and started? And, um, you know, uh, was the first seven inch you guys, well, you put out that four song EP, right? That was the first thing in 99? Uh, the first one was uh, the split seven inch with Love Lost. Oh, Love Lost. Because um, their drummer grew up in Delta. So that's so basically our drummer and their drummer were really really good friends with uh, with other people in our band um yeah they grew up together before he moved before he moved to st louis so that's how that split ended up happening yeah um, and yeah i guess like i don't understand how i i don't remember really how i was lucky enough to be able to you know be a, be one of the singers in the band like but um, no, I just remember like thinking about like how I wanted to sound. And I remember like the Elements and E Jasmine split seven inch, like the vocals on the Jasmine side were like, that was like, that's how I want to sound. And I never did. And it was like, <laughs> um, but no, I was always scared like of playing shows, like at least for the first like two years. Yeah, same here. I, I was like nervous the first, you know, I've been in a couple of bands and the first couple of times I was I was nervous, you know, but the funny thing is everybody was like, don't turn your back, you know, because you see a lot of vocalists turn turn their back to the audience like in the first few shows. And uh, I made sure that I didn't just to kind of overcome my fear of like playing live, I guess. Yeah, no, it took me a long time to turn around and face the people that I was performing in front of or whatever uh, like our, our first show ever was like pretty silly in a way like i think i sang the lyrics like the same lyrics to do different songs because i forgot them like you know you're like 17 years old yeah like, completely new and strange experience for some for some reason i thought the um all i asked seven inch was first before the love lost um seven inch was that was that very like um close in in time frame of releasing those two yeah i think yeah they were all really close um yeah the first uh yeah the love lost split and then so we did two different recording sessions we did the one session that had the two songs from the love lost split and then um the other song went on to a comp like a cd comp like how to be a hero i think or Something like that. And then we did another session, which was five songs. And we did that four song, seven inch, and the song for the All I Ask split. How did you, how did you hook up with All I Ask? I know um, what, um, Jason and Jeff uh, were in that band, correct? From Orchid? Yeah, I think that was um, Mike from Electric Human Projects doing. We didn't know them at that time. Oh, they just like connected the two of you guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so like, that 99 thing started to like flourish for you guys, obviously, because you put out the, was it the, the four song self title, um, seven inch, and then the two splits, then where shows started to happen once those things got put out. Yeah, um, we, let's see, 
Um, yeah, we definitely started to play a lot more for sure. And um, we never like did any like touring or anything until much later. Um, Cause I think by that time we were already, we had moved on to like another guitarist. So um, yeah, I'm tr it's hard to remember. It was so long ago. Um, but yeah, no, I know we pl we played a lot and we, it was mostly, you know, Delaware area and like Philly and stuff like that. Yeah. Do you remember any of the first couple shows that were with um, bigger bands that you, you know, liked? Yeah, um, our first show we played at, um, in Reading, actually, in Reading, PA, at our friend Alexander T's house. And um, it was, yeah, it was just ridiculous to think, like, we had to borrow, like, five cars to get all our stuff up. None, we, you know, we didn't have a van or anything. Yeah. And so it's like, you know, high school friends borrowing their parents' car to drive, like, a piece of equipment and, like, one other person up there. Um, and I feel like Black Me Jacket played, but that's probably not true, but for whatever reason, that's in my memory. <laughs> um, no, there were definitely points where, like, we played with bands that we were, like, very, like, surprised to be able to play with. And, and back then, what kind of bands um, did you like in that genre? Because, I, like I said before to a bunch of people, and especially my friend Ron from Pittsburgh, um, we always talk about the music back then. Nobody called it Screamo back then. And, you know, Scrams was never even a, an inkling of a thought, which that word drives me crazy. But it was just hardcore, you know, punk music that was like kind of took like a left turn and wasn't like the metalcore stuff. It, um, But back then, nobody called it Screamo. I didn't call it Screamo when I first heard that kind of music. Um, what were the bands that kind of you you loved he hearing and, and were excited to, you know, possibly play with um, at that time? Um, well, it's funny that you say the Screamo thing, because I, yeah, those, all those words really, really bother me as well. But I do remember hearing that word in high school. Um, like, there, now that I think about it, there was a band before Joshua First for Battle that I think, like, one or two members may have been in. Um, and I don't remember the name of it, but they definitely, it was either Screamo or screamo and i was just like oh, that's cool <laughs> like, whatever. Um, but no i think collectively like as a band like reversal man and like maximilian colby and like those like the that style was like very like influential to us and did you guys ever get to play with reversal man no 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 um I got, we, we all, most of us went to like Wilkes Bear Fest in like 1998 to go see them, you know? And so, yeah, like 90, 98, 99, we were still in the, in like, be like, yeah, we have a band, but we would never be able to play any of those shows. And, and so after 99, um, 2000 came with the flashbulb memory, um, split and then, mm -hmm. got, and then, um, you did what was next after 2001 you did the neil perry split and then was that the the real album that that came after that in the same year 2001 yeah basically in um, 2000 was probably like 90, 99 was when like us and neil perry started to like really like gel and like hang out all the time yeah like as like we were still like separate bands like didn't share members um but we used to like all go and hang out in New Jersey with them all the time. And did, was there a Neil Perry Joshua Fifth for Battle tour in 2001? Yes. Um, sp no, spring of 2002, I believe. 2002. Yeah. Because um, I, I posted um, a couple of days ago the Fuck Fest in New Bedford, Massachusetts, where you guys played, and it's, uh, it's 20, it was a 20 year anniversary of um, that show. I don't know if you remember that show, but it was. Um, you guys, Neil Perry, Usurp, um, Crestfallen had played when they first started. Um, I don't know if you guys were there the day before, but it was like, um, as the Sunsets played, like right before they became daughters. Um, yes, yeah, I remember, I loved As the Sunsets back then. I yeah. did too, I, I love that first album. A lot of people don't like the first album. I like everything they've done, obviously, 
but like the first like metal chorus album that as the sunsets did like still to this day blows me away how heavy it is and like um you know obviously they were doing like two three minute long songs then but yeah. be before they started shortening up their stuff but uh um i wanted to ask if you remember that fest at all and were you there the day before uh, because it was like a two-day fest so the day before as the sunsets played yeah it was them books lie uh trillion barnacle collapse before they turned um they were more of a like a screamy band before they yeah. turned kind of um you know with the keyboards and, and kind of the way they turned out to be um I'm yeah i don't I don't really remember being there two days, but I definitely saw a Trillion Barnacle Collapse as, as the sun sets. So you might have been there for, for the yeah. two-day fest, yeah. Do you remember that fest at all playing? And uh, looking oh, back, seeing, the, seeing, those, seeing those videos, uh, I see them all over the internet because me and my buddy Brian uh, duped a bunch of VHS tapes and sent them out everywhere. So, like, I'll see randomly, like, on YouTube, I'll see the video that I recorded. And uh, it's just funny that it's been spread out so much. Um, and, and what's your memory of that fest? Oh man, I have like so many memories surrounding that fest. Like, I think we had a, we had a van at that point. So I remember like being in the van, but I drove up with my girlfriend at the time. And I guess I remember getting a speed ticket on the way there. Um, I think that was right after um, we had toured with uh, Drone's Dream and 1AM Radio. Um, and I quit my job for that tour. So I remember not having to worry about getting off to go play this best thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I remember we, we had stayed at a friend's house in Providence the, that weekend. And yeah, I remember that, that show being super fun. Yeah. Do you remember the uh, cheerleader on top of the um, amp for USERP that, that was dancing in a cheerleader uniform? Vaguely. <laughs> yeah, vaguely. I don't remember too much, like, I don't remember seeing you serve at that fest. Yeah, they, play, I, they actually played right after you guys. Like, you guys ended, and then within, like, 15 minutes, they played right after uh, Joshua played. Oh, crazy. Oh. Yeah, I like, oddly enough, yeah, I remember seeing As the Sun Sets and, like, A Trillion Barnacle Collapse, and then I remember all the external stuff surrounding that weekend. And then I remember playing, and Neil Perry played too, right? Yeah, they played. It yeah. was, yeah, they, it was Neil Perry. Like, this, the end of the night was Neil Perry – Joshua fit for battle and then usurp ended ended the show okay and like neil perry had no bassist yes that, correct right correct yeah. yes yeah i remember that yeah now how did josh get into the fold of of uh joshua fit for battle um we just needed someone with that name in the band just to <laughs> <laughs> um now he we just like like i said like the two like the two bands just like really got along together and so when it's we needed another guitarist he stepped in to help us out and because go ahead. without like the band probably would have split for good potentially. How long did you guys go on after Josh had, had joined the band? Um, so Josh was there. I mean, he was probably in the band for two years. So I think we were done probably like late 2002, very early 2003, maybe. And and what um, besides the Jerome Stream and One AM Radio tour, uh, who else did you end up touring with when you were in Joshua Fit for Battle? We um we were supposed to do this, like whole week long thing, and we played with the Swarm twice, and both times it was like a radio show. Really? Yeah. So like we never played to anybody with them, but we did perf we did like perform at the same like, and I remember hanging out with them in Jersey City. Um. But yeah, we didn't have much luck like traveling. Like it's surprising that like our music went so far, like everywhere, you know, we never, I don't think we ever traveled west of like Cleveland, Ohio. And you guys, but you would play like a lot of shows just here and there because um, like I said, the New Bedford Fest. And then uh, I have another video that I recorded when I saw you guys up in stores, Connecticut, um, Brian Frenette from uh, They and the Children had set up that show. Um, it seemed yeah. like you guys would play like everywhere, like in the in the vicinity of, of Delaware and New Jersey and stuff like that. Uh, it seemed like you guys would travel far just for, you know, uh, you know, a show or two. Yeah, I mean, we would play anywhere like within like, you know, six hours is what, like somewhat reasonable to drive I guess, at the time. <laughs> now I wouldn't. But yeah, no, we were excited. So like we, you know, Connecticut, we were like, holy crap. All right, let's go. 
and that was a, that was a great show too. Uh, mm -hmm. That was a really good show. Um, so when Joshua, like, what kind of, without getting into crazy detail, what kind of ended Joshua fit for battle? And in this is a two parter. Uh, what did you do before Welcome to Plague Year happened? Were you because wasn't there like a year and a half, two year gap where um, were you doing anything musically or or? Uh... Um, I feel like the. By the time Joshua Pfeiffer Battle ended, we were down to like three original members. Um, we like one of our last shows ended up being like a first show with a new guitarist that was with us from when we toured with uh, One Am Radio and Drum Stream, uh, our friend Brian. Um, I don't know. I feel like it was just like you know sometimes things run their course, and it's just like it was four years, like four four and a half years, and I think like. A lot of people were like pulling in different directions, maybe. Yeah. Um, prior to Welcome the Plague Year, um, I started playing drums in this band uh, with uh, Mike Haley and Joe, who was the other singer in Joshua Fit for Battle for a while. Um, that was called Echo Constructor. And we, um, we were around for like a year and a half, I guess. And I remember. Uh, Welcome to Plague Year toured in the summer of 2003, so there wasn't that much down. Yeah, it was it was a close close gap. Yeah, yeah. Now with um, that not that other band, is there anything um, online that you can hear that band? Because I've I've never heard I've never heard that band that you were in playing drums. It's funny we um we recorded in 2003, and a band camp just went up like a week and a half ago. Which oh we really? For the first time ever, yeah. And it's just like we, um, it's just like stoner rock, like new, like doom stuff. And uh, we were just, we were at a, we were, we were all just hanging out outside of a show. And we were just like, we should go, we should start a band. And I was like, I want to play drums. And the first practice was the first time I played drums. And thankfully, it was a really slow band musically. So it was, easy to adjust you know <laughs> did, you, did you always want to play drums or or were you kind of like a novice playing drums all the time and then you kind of wanted to try it out in a band um i think i always really liked drummers and i always watched drummers you know when you see a band play that's like you know you tend to focus on something i always focused on drummers but yeah no i had never owned a drum set i didn't own a drum set for most of that band actually um yeah it was just like something new to do and so I remember um, the first Welcome to Play Gear show, I had actually played an Echo Constructor show in Delaware, got done and then drove to Philadelphia and did the first Welcome to Play Gear show. And that was like in some, in like spring of 2003, I think. 2003. Um, how, now, how did Welcome to Play Gear start? Uh, who kind of got that together when that happened? Um, I would say it was uh, me and and the drummer, Joshua for Battle, Kevin, and like two people from, well, actually just uh, Chris from Neil Perry and uh, Carrie Jo. Um, and it's funny, like how, like Welcome to Play Gear probably wouldn't have existed without the emo chat room on AOL. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's how me and Josh met. <laughs> oh, no kidding. Yeah, just by like quoting Makara lyrics. Yeah. Like, so that's that's the whole reason like Neil Perry knew Joshua Battle and Welcome to Play Gear started and how we met Carrie and yeah, it's just crazy like I don't know. It's weird to think about like that. But Yeah, I was listening to the uh, Makara discography just a couple of days ago. Uh it still holds up so good. I, I love that discography um C D. It's so good. Yeah, absolutely. Now now was she living in she wasn't living in Delaware when you guys started, right? Was she no, I met her um, in, she was living up near Wilkes-Barre. And then she ended up living in Philadelphia when the band started. Now, did you move and up? So, to, yeah. Sorry, did you move up? No. To, I, to Philly? No, I, 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 I did eventually, but then I was still living in Delaware. So it was like me and Kevin from Josh River Battle um, would drive up to Philadelphia and play with them. How how much how long of a drive was that for you guys? Was it a long drive like to to practice here and there, or was it fairly close? No, like forty forty five minutes. Oh, it's not bad at all. No, not at all. 
And um, so the, what was the first thing that you guys put out uh, for Welcome to Play Gear? Was it the, um, wasn't the split, right, with Funeral Diner? That wasn't the first thing, was it? Or was it the nine song self-titled thing that you guys did? Um, well, we did a three song demo that we recorded with Jeff from Neil Perry. That's right. Um, and all those songs got reused for the LP. Um, and now we recorded everything all at once. And uh, basically everything came out at the same time. So we left for, to for, we left for a full US tour in 2004. And we got our LPs, our split seven inch and the one sided seven inch all at the same time. And the, and the last thing that you guys did was the Ampere split, right? That, that was yeah. just that one song that was on, on that. Mm -hmm. And that was totally a different recording for that or? Yeah. Yeah, that's the only song that was from a different session, yeah. Um, so what was the tour that you got, uh, who toured with you on that tour that you guys did? Oh man, it was really, it was really great. We, um, we, we uh, spent like a week with Funeral Diner in California. And then um, I think once we got to the Southeast, we were with uh, this band Hugs. Mm. Um, Cowboys became folk heroes and the fiction from New York. And so like Cowboys became folk heroes were like friends from Florida that we knew from like Joshua Fifth for Battle and Neil Perry times like, and uh, so it was really nice to hang out with them, you know? So those those four or five bands did a bunch of shows in the, was it in yeah. the East, East Coast? Yeah, it was called The Tornado. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, it was just a great time, it was just like, 20 to 25 people all traveling together from yeah Lake. that's a great that's a great lineup too yeah absolutely great lineup um do, what were some of the memorable shows that you remember from from that tour um let's see um no, raleigh north carolina was super fun like, it was just like it was you know living room in the middle of the summer just like super gross and <laughs> Those yeah. are all those, those are always the funnest ones. Basements and living rooms and kitchens, yeah. kitchens. No, all of my all of my favorite memories are basically house shows for the most part. Yeah, they're they're great. Now now with the pandemic, uh, speaking of house shows, um, you know, with COVID hitting and, and you know, smaller clubs um closing down unfortunately, which is which is like crushing. Um whenever things kind of get back to normal, um do you think you'll see more basement shows and more house shows because of like these club, these smaller clubs uh, closing down? Or, I mean, it's it, it'll be scary for the owner of the house too to have you know say hey fifty strangers come into my house after after a pandemic or you know whenever it does become normal. But I feel like basement shows will be a bigger thing like moving forward. Yeah, it's so hard to even think about like standing in a room with a bunch of people. I just, um, like, it sucks. <laughs> yeah. It really sucks. Like, I haven't seen a band play in forever. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I mean, Philadelphia still has a lot of basement, still has the whole basement show culture. And, you know, being 40 years old, like, I'm not too in tune with it anymore. Yeah. And, like, I don't, I live outside of Philadelphia now. So, but... Now, I'm sure, I'm sure it'll continue. Yeah. Now, do you listen to um, heavy music still, or or do you, do you kind of listen to it, uh, different kinds of music now, or do you still keep in touch with kind of the newer, heavier bands from, uh, you know, maybe in your area? Um, I try to. Um, I've been like kind of obsessed with uh, this. Like, um, there's a. Uh, and there's like this black metal like uh, cooperative in the Netherlands that like have put out like a whole bunch of good music in the last like four or five years that I've been like vaguely obsessed with. And um, there's a uh, there's a uh, reggae like group uh, called the Cooperators out of Bristol, England that I've been listening to a ton of also. Um, so between those two things, like because like. Like the group from the Netherlands, it's like, you know, eight people in like five different bands. Really? Wow. And they all sound like vaguely similar, but like also like 
you know, different enough that it's worth putting out like all that different material. And where are you listening? Are you listening to that on uh, Bandcamp or Spotify or uh, where are you listening to that? So if, uh, if anybody wants to hear it. I mean, Spotify has been super helpful just because it's easy to be like, oh, who listen? if I like this, what else can I listen to next? Um, but yeah, like this band, like uh, Turia, like T-U-R-I-A, like probably my favorite band right now. And it's just a two piece. Well, three piece rather. Guitar, drums and vocalist. And it's just really cool. And that's the that's the black metal type of yeah. stuff. Yeah, and they're they have they have a Bandcamp page and they're on uh, Spotify also. Um, but yeah, as far as like music that like 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 screamy emo stuff, you know, like that. Like I don't really listen to much of it anymore. Um, I still I still really enjoy like the stuff that I listened to back when like Josh Who Fit for Battle was starting. And like Welcome to Play Gear was starting. But even during that time, I wasn't really listening to much of it. Like I just listened to a lot of metal and like pop punk too. Yeah. 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 What, what, what were some of your favorite bands um, when you were in Joshua Fit for Battle and Welcome to Play Gear though to listen to? Like was like Orchid, obviously Reversal of Man is, is like top with everybody. But I mean, uh, what were like some of the, your favorite bands that either you played with or, or you listened to and enjoyed like putting on the album? Um, I really liked, we, we got to play a, a bunch of shows with Mannequin and I really, I really liked them and like, I liked Malady. Um, I, I really enjoyed like 1AM Radio and Drumstream when we were like, I listened to them a lot. Um, and Neil Perry, like I liked them a whole bunch. Um, but other than that, like I just listened to like, I was just like dabbling in like, like, like death metal and like black metal stuff then and a lot of just like uh i'm trying to think like just a lot of like lo-fi like pop punk stuff yeah i really enjoyed speaking of uh mannequin and malady uh have you heard the terminal bliss stuff that um mike and chris uh just put out with, with, yeah what, and what do you think of that it's really awesome it's super noisy i yeah, love it it's good stuff um and and speaking of like bands uh, you know older guys getting back together and playing music what did you think of jerome's dream getting back together and doing a tour and playing with daughters in europe and and uh just touring the united states like crazy uh being their age you know around our age uh, i think it's a great thing and and the newer album to me sounded great and now they're putting out uh you know reissued songs where jeff is is screaming again which uh i think is phenomenal i although i love the old stuff too um What's your take on that? Um, I think it's I think it's cool that people are able to like get back together and do stuff. You know, um, I I was thinking about like you know the whole like reunion thing and how I I don't know I don't like I don't think I would be comfortable doing it with any of my bands just because like I've you know been playing in bands like pretty consistently since Welcome to Plague Your ended like nonstop. And I just enjoy, like, it would feel weird for me, you know, because it's, like, such, like, a time period type thing. Yeah. Like, getting together and writing new songs, you know, that's really cool. Yeah. But if it's just a situation where you're just, like, playing, like, old stuff for the sake of it, then I don't know. I don't know if I could do that. Yeah. But, but also, like, you know, bands do that, and they also, like, all, like, you know, they do it for a good cause and, like, raise money. Mm. So, I mean, from that angle, it's, like, I think it's a good purpose. Yeah, because I think like, um, wasn't it page 99 uh, kind of got back together for a little while with City of Catacol and they did the, those tours where everything was for a benefit like throughout, uh, I think the West, they did like a bunch of shows in East and I think every single show was for a different benefit, which I thought was amazing. I think that happened maybe two years ago. Um, yeah, I think that was with Majority Rule. Right? And Majority Rule, yes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the thing is like, I really... Like, I didn't really listen to Page 99 or... I listened to Majority Rule a little bit, like, back when, like, we used to play shows together. But, like, um, I really enjoy them as a band from, like, the political um, aspect of it, you know? And, like, I feel like, you know, like, if you think about, like, a punk band, and I've always wanted to be, like, you know, if I had to describe my bands, it'd be, like, you're a punk band, you know? But, like, Page 99 and, like, all those bands, like, really solid. And, like, 
you know, really like awesome punk bands. And like it may, I may not have listened to them much, but like I really appreciated what they did. Now, now, so talking about reunions, obviously, like if if the guys from Joshua Fit for Battle came in to you and you talked and and you were like, let's make some new music, would would that be something that you'd be interested in, or like say, let's make a four song EP, like and and maybe do a handful of shows. I know I'm just dreaming, but I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. Um, would would you think about doing that or? Um, I would think about it for sure, but I think like it would be more like let's see if we can get together and hang out four weekends in a row before we even bring <laughs> instruments into it, you know? Yeah. And not a personality thing, but just of like being consistent with like getting together, you know? Yeah. Because um, yeah, I mean it's always cool to like think about that type of thing, but the logistics of it is like. It's pretty tough, you know. Our our bassist lives in Virginia, and you know, has kids. Yeah, yeah. D now, do you keep in touch with everybody in in both of those bands, uh, or have you kind of lost touch with a few people here and there? Because Josh, I mean, I used to like um, write Josh letters and like AOL Messenger him uh, to try and get him to play shows and stuff like that, and then he kind of like went off the map a little bit. I I haven't seen him at all or or talked to him, um, but. Do you do you stay in contact with everybody from those two bands for the most part? Uh, not everybody, but yeah, there's a few people. Um, yeah, Josh, I haven't spoken to since 2003, possibly 2004, maybe. Um, I have no idea how to get in touch with him. I, I listened to a podcast that he did, um, but yeah, no, there's people that like, you know, I was talking to Joe the other day. Like, there's people that I talk to on like a somewhat regular basis, and then others that like I don't talk to at all. You know. Yeah. Um, so after Welcome to Plague Year, tell me about, like, you were in a band called Kick Rocks, correct? Yeah. Well, right after Welcome to Plague Year ended, um, we kind of, like, reshuffled it, and I went from singing to playing drums um, in this band, Track of Monarchs, with uh, Joe, I mean, sorry, with John, who played bass, and Chris, who played guitar. And we did, we have, like, five or six songs that are, like, live recorded from shows on YouTube, um, and we traveled with towers for like a couple of days in 2006 and that band was like very short-lived but it was kind of like welcome to plague your ended and then we just kind of like the next weekend started that band is and it, it lasted, it lasted it, for seven months is it in the same vein as welcome to plague your music wise or is it yeah the drums aren't as good but <laughs> It was really hard, like, because Kevin's like an amazing drummer. And there's once the last Welcome to Play Gear song is one of the Track of Monarch songs. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, and it was written. So, of course, I had to try and, like, <laughs> you drum as close as possible. Like, it was, uh, it was humiliating, but. <laughs> who, was, uh, who was doing the vocals in that band? Uh, John and Chris. So, it was, yeah, it was just a three piece. And we, um, we played like down in the southeast a little bit and we went out to the midwest and then after that it was done yeah and you guys never thought about recording those the songs you guys did like in in a studio? Not a, no 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 well at least i can i can look it up on on youtube and and try to find it yeah yeah i mean some of this stuff like like they're live recordings of shows and so it's like a varying quality <laughs> both musically and like re audio but you know, because I was playing drums, but it's a, uh, it was cool. I really liked it. And then, yeah, so then after that, um, I toured, um, do you know that band Pyramids? Yes. I filled in with Pyramids for a tour, playing drums. And then uh, after that, it was a while before, like, I started playing in, in a band again. Yeah, it was with Kick Rocks. And then, and then you were in a band called Paramedic, correct, too? Mm -hmm. And that, they were, they, they were like, um, like, punky poppy type of you know uh stuff uh tell me how that that went into you know fruition how'd that happen um so kick rocks was the first band and yeah we just hadn't i just hadn't been in a band a long time and i'd always listened to like like punk and like pop punk stuff growing up and so it was me and peter from algernon and uh ben and craig from towers and 
we just decided to form a pop punk band. And it was like this whole new style of music that I had to figure out how to play on drums. It was no. really hard, uh, oddly enough. No, uh, is, is Kick Rocks, can you find that anywhere too? Because um, I was looking for it and I couldn't find it anywhere. I, I, I listened to Paramedic, but I, I couldn't find anything on Kick Rocks. I think if you go to the Be Happy Records band camp, it's under there. Okay. Like Craig has put all that stuff under there. Like every band he's ever been in. Sweet. Yeah. No, that band was super fun. And, and what, actually, what did you guys put out? How, like, um, what kind of... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no. I was just wondering, like, if you put out a 7-inch or or was there, there like, a EP or something like that? We uh, had a demo cassette, and then we put out a split tape with um, Best Friends, which was um, Jenna and Scott from Her's old band. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. And that was, they, they also played like poppy stuff. And, um, and then we recorded like a piece worth of stuff that just never got released. <laughs> Do you still have the masters or is somebody else? I, I imagine Craig does. Craig does. Or Steve Roach. Yeah. Someone does. Yeah. <laughs> and then that turned, and then you kind of went into, was Paramedic your last band that you, you played in or? No, um, Paramedic and Kick Rocks like coexisted at the same time. Like I played back to back sets with those bands before. Um, I'd been playing in a band with my wife and friends um, after that called uh, Life Uniform. And uh, I'm currently in a band called Dream Waste with my wife and my friend Carlos. Um, and we just kind of like are on hiatus because we got rid of our practice space because couldn't go in and it was, you know, it's like in that situation, so. Yeah, and what, and what type of music is that? Um, kind of the same deal, like, but it's kind of like poppy, like, um, but Life Uniform and Dreamways kind of is like more of like a surfy aspect to it. Kind of like, uh, you know, the Kids in the Hall themes. Yeah, yes. Not to that extreme, but inspired by that. Oh, nice. It, yeah. it, it, um, what does your wife um, play, or does she do the vocals? She plays guitar and does vocals. Oh, nice. And are you still doing vocals as well, or are you playing drums in those? I'm playing drums, but I did actually sing on one of the songs, which was really tough. You know, cause, like doing two things at once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <I promise> it. <laughs> Um, now, do you ever have like a, you know, a fever of getting back into like a heavy band again and screaming uh, again? Is there, is there still the fire in, inside you to do that type of thing? Or, or I know that you're talking about black metal and, and uh, you know, a death metal. Is, is there something you'd like to do in that, that style? I mean, theoretically, yes, I would love to. Um, but yeah, no, um, last winter, like, like I had started conversations about like starting a new band, but I don't know. It's just been so long since like, that's been like, like that aspect of being in a band has been in my life that it's like hard to, uh, I don't know, feasibly get back into it. Cause like, I'm so used to doing a certain set of things and then I don't know. Yeah. And it, and it's probably been a while since you've, you've screamed. Correct. So, I mean, that kind of has to work itself out again. I know, I know uh, there was like a time frame where I was, I stopped screaming for two years and then I joined a band again and I had to like, you know, get the vocal cords going again and, and, and you know, but once I got going, obviously, you know, it's, it's easier to do, but. Uh, yeah, no, that's funny. That's, that was like the thing that was like, that was so scary about being a Joshua Fit for Battle. Cause like I hadn't figured out how to do it properly yet. So if I ever like had to think about playing a show two days in a row, I'm just like, well, the next day is going to be awful. <laughs> I have no voice anymore. But yeah, it took me all the way to like being in Welcome to Play Gear before I figured out how to like do vocals properly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, last winter we were um we were messing around with some other friends in our practice space and just like kind of playing like heavy stuff and like I was like screaming along to it or whatever. And I was like, Oh, it's not so bad. I can still maybe do it. You yeah. Know? Well, I, I, like I said, I would love to hear hear uh, you in a heavy band again because uh, Joshua Fifth for Battle and Welcome to Play Gear, I think, is, is you know, up there in the top uh, of that genre for me and, and a lot of other people, uh, you know, 
Joshua fit for battle, especially uh, gets talked about, which I hate using like screamo and, and, and scrams. I, I can't stand either one of those words, but um, you guys are like in the top of, of that genre. And um, to me, at least, you know what I mean? It, so um, like I said, if, if a reunion ever happened, I think it would be huge because there's so many people that love uh, your old band. Um, I'm not pushing it. I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, no, I hear you. And like, it's really neat to like, think back on like, when like the band first started, you know, and just like, we were like, practicing in our friend's mom's basement, you know, and like, I literally remember like writing lyrics with Joe for the first song we ever wrote, like in the kitchen, you know, and just being like, all right, what are we gonna sing about? This has got to be like serious stuff, I guess. And, you know, we were like 17 years old. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, to go from that and like, to this, you know, so many years later, which I appreciate. Um, it's just so it's, from my perspective, it seems like so weird. But like, I would have thought the same thing of other bands, you know, as like a fan, you know? Yeah. Where like, I like, like when you were saying like what bands did you play with like i couldn't think of anything off the top of my head but i know there were definitely bands where i'm like man i can't believe we get to play with this band you know yeah and you're like they're just like regular people but you, they don't seem that way like when you're on the other side of it you know we got we got a couple of mike taylor saying uh joshua fit for battle reunion 2022 steven from ampere uh <laughs> welcome to play gear reunion 2023 <laughs> Yeah, uh, our, my friend Greg's trying to get the Ben Salem sessions back going, which is what I was referencing earlier from last winter. So <laughs> yeah, see, so so that's why when I was talking to uh, Jamie uh, from Off Minor and and Seisha, I was saying, you know, Seisha got so huge after Seisha um, ended. You know what I mean? Like, like I saw Seisha, and there was it was at a fest. I mean, there was a bunch of kids, but it wasn't packed. Like, say if Seisha got back together again today it the shows would be sold out um and same thing with joshua fit for battle or welcome to play i feel like if if you know people don't realize how great those bands were and in your bands and i feel like when you do a reunion then you get the younger kids and then you get the older crowd and then it's just like a huge you know um ton of people that are totally into it going wild for for those bands you know like page 99 shows were crazy like the videos i saw in the west were like packed and uh, i feel like it's it's almost like people took it for granted back then because like like i said seisha he was talking about you know there was 30 people watching seisha at some point but you know if they got back together again now it would be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people going to those shows um so yeah, I mean, you got to figure like, in the in a band's existence, you have what like four years to get like, to build up a following or like get crowds there, and then like when you look back like twenty years later or fifteen years later, it's like fifteen years of new people being, you know, introduced to your music and getting into it and like being like, oh, I'd go see this or whatever, you know. Um, yeah, no, it's funny. There's like I remember being when Joshua Battle first started went to a nine fest in Baltimore and Seisha played. So I remember seeing Seisha while Joshua battle existed, but it was well before it was worth talking about this. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It was just like, we still only have one guitar cabinet between two guitars. <laughs> I know when I saw Seisha, I didn't even know who they were. Some kid was like, Oh, have you, have you heard this band? And I'm like, no, and they're like, Oh, you got to watch this set. And then I watched it and I was blown away. I was like, Oh my, I was like, Holy shit. Like this band is, is like, really something else uh but then they had broken up like maybe a year after i had seen them um so just saying that it, um although like the fest the fuck fest um there was a lot of people all over you guys at, at that show you 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 got pushed down uh on the ground a couple times i, I in the video you're you're making sure you're not bleeding from your neck you know what i mean i see you go, you're like making sure you're not bleeding and uh, so yeah. there was a lot of people at some shows but i'm just saying in general um I think it would be a huge, huge thing. Definitely. Yeah, no, I definitely remember there being, you know, a lot of people at our shows and like, it was really cool to be able to like, I don't know, it's just like, it's crazy to like think like that many people are interested in what you do, you know? Now, now, do you have any younger people coming up and saying like, or, like getting in touch with you or saying like, oh my God, I'm 
18 years old, I'm starting a band. I love Joshua Fit for Battle. I, I love Welcome to Play Gear. Like, do you see a lot of younger people getting into, I mean, because the music's like, I mean, we're talking maybe 20, uh, 15, year, 15, 20 years ago. So uh, do you see that a lot with young people? Um, yeah, a little bit. There's like, um, there's this band uh, from Delaware called yeah. Love Supreme. And they, um, they were from Delaware. And like, I think they've definitely like referenced us as like influences. And I've been in touch with uh, one of the per people in the band, you know? And yeah, it's just really neat to like, because you think like, because like I always thought like when I'm done like being in those bands, that style of music, like addition to something else or like, you know, still bands that do all that, that, that still play that style of music. Yeah, it's uh, um, that. Re it reminds me that you, when you say that, because uh, I feel like now there's so many bands that are are kind of like it was back in the early 2000s, late late 90s. I think like there's a big reassurance uh, of uh, new bands that play that style of music, and and the scene seems to like be coming together. Before COVID hit, uh, it kind of drew me back in because I had stopped like going to you know hardcore shows and stuff like that maybe in like 2008 2009 because it just kind of got mundane and like kind of stale for me i started going to hip-hop shows a lot and i went mm -hmm. to hip-hop shows probably for a good like 10 12 years and then the last three years i just kept hearing these new bands and getting exposed to them and i feel like the scene is almost like like it was back then like it's starting to and then of course covid hit and it kind of put a wrench in the works but um it's, I feel like there's a lot of new bands that are kind of in that same vein that when you guys played. And um, I know you're not really listening to that kind of stuff, but uh, I, I feel like just the community itself, like the caring, the political aspects, like everything, just like really caring, caring scene now again. And um, I can feel it. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I've been mm -hmm. around for a long time. So um, it, it's kind of like weird for the old guy to be at a, at a, <laughs> a hardcore show in the back with gray hair and a gray beard, but um, right. I, I still love it. You know what I mean? Absolutely, yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, yeah, one of the last shows I went to before, like, the COVID happened was, like, an awesome hip-hop show. Uh, do you, are you, do you know who Billy Woods is? I do know who Billy Woods is, yeah. Yeah, Billy Woods is incredible. Oh, no kidding. Was that at, yeah. a, was it at a smaller... Uh, yeah, it was at the place called Johnny Brenda's. And it was just tiny and it was amazing. Yeah, I've never got to see Billy Woods. I always want to, but um, I don't know if he ever came up to, you know, Boston, the Boston area. I mean, I'm from New Hampshire, but I'll, I'll travel anywhere really to, mm -hmm. to see a show within the New England area. Um, but I've never seen Billy Woods. I'd, I'd, I would definitely go for sure. Yeah, hopefully that happens sometime soon. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm, I'm itching for a show. I think like, uh, I, I'm trying to think of the last show I actually went to. Uh, hardcore wise, I think the last hardcore show might have been the Jerome Stream uh, reunion show that they played up here in 2019. I think that was like the last the last hardcore show I went to. Got you. I think I'm pretty sure the last last show I went to was probably uh, I think it was Team Dresh and Death Arc, and um, it was so good. It was what? so nice. It was so awesome to see Team Dresh. Where, uh, where was that at? It was at the Union Transfer in Philly. And how long, how long ago was that? What was the last, like, what was the month? Was it in, uh, I'm trying to think when COVID really started hitting, like, uh, maybe March? Was it March? Yeah, I mean, lo lockdowns went down in March because I got shoulder surgery, like, the day, like, everything got shut down. Um, so I don't know exactly when the team dress show was, but it feels like the last thing I saw. Who knows? It was so long ago. Yeah, it was crazy. I, I saw Dinosaur Jr. played a, a couple shows outside, and it was like you, you pay by the car, but you'd have to be like – you didn't have to stay in your car, but you had to be like, you know, 25 feet away from – and it was in like a big field, and they put a big uh, um, stage up. I think Brian Frenette from They and the Children went because he was uh, posting videos. And I heard somebody else say that they saw it up in New Hampshire too, same type of deal, like you pay by the car – and then you go in and then you kind of just like, they only let X amount of people in, but they played shows during the, like the height of the pandemic, I think. I think it was maybe in August or, or you know. Yeah. 
Um, do you know Brian's new band, Ritual Clearing? Yes. Yeah, I, I got their, I bought their cassette like a month or two ago. It's yeah, awesome. it's really good. It's really good. He's He's got his hand in everything. I mean, uh, they and the children were like, you know, straight up like hardcore. And, the, and then uh, what, was it Iron Hand that he, it was kind of like a crusty, crustier thing. And now Ritual Clearing is, is like straight black metal. Um, yeah, I love it. It's so good. He's he's always got his his, his hand in something cool. Um, he's a great guy too. One of the, one of the like greatest guys from the scene. Always super nice and uh, gave my band a shot like to play with Off Minor and Wolves in in Connecticut too. So like hats off to Brian. He set up amazing shows and 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 so did Pete uh, um, Zetlin from. Um, Sinaloa, he Sinaloa, yeah, amazing, amazing shows up here too. Those two guys, I wouldn't have seen the shows I saw up here if it wasn't for those two guys. Yeah, no, I feel like Josh. I think Josh from Fifth for, Fifth for Battle's last show was a show that Brian put on. That wasn't that wasn't the one that I posted today, was it? Maybe um, my first my first step towards failure played. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that was, was one of your last show. shows. I think it was our le absolutely last show. Wow. It was not planned that way. Wow. Okay. That way. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, I did not know that. Yeah. I forget who else played. Five. I think uh, sometimes walking, sometimes running played. And uh -huh. uh, I think Transistor had actually played. Transistor, Transistor played that show too as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. We drove a long way to have our uh, last show out of state. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess so. <laughs> Jeez. Um, all right. Well, I don't want to keep you for too long. Usually uh, I, I do a little rapid fire at the end uh, with everybody. Okay. Um, so I'm going to throw this out here. Number one, favorite New England punk hardcore band. New England be being like Massachusetts, uh, Rhode Island, Connecticut, um, you know, of all time. Favorite punk hardcore band from New England. I'm going to have to go Ampere. Um, what was the first punk hardcore show you attended? It was a Boy Says Fire show down the street from my house. Did anybody else uh, um, play that show that was worth mentioning? Um, actually, yeah. Um, I mean, only in the context of Joshua Battles, like two people from Joshua Battles' old bands. So oh. uh, Bessemer Process, I think, played. Or a Union, something like that. How old were you at, at that point when you, when you saw that? 15. 15. Um, all-time favorite punk hardcore show you played? What, well, let's you played. Uh, let's do two: one with Joshua Fit for Battle and one with Welcome to Plague Gear. What were your two favorite shows that you guys played that were memorable that meant something to you? Um, Joshua for Battle was probably Lakeland, Florida, at this kid Josh's house. Um, we played with uh, Cowboys Became Folk Heroes um, and a band whose drummer went to go play in Torch. Um, but it was, it was a house show. And it was like in the living room, there was like a spiral staircase. And it was like spring, but, but it was Florida. So it was like super hot. Yeah. And so it was us and Neil Perry. And it was just amazing. It was so good. And then Welcome to Plague Year. Um, that one's tough. We played a lot of, a lot of cool shows, but... Um, like I said, yeah, probably the the house show in Raleigh, North Carolina, was really really awesome. Now, was, is there a lot of footage from from you guys playing out there? Because I, I I'm like huge on recording uh, shows, and I feel like everybody, like all the shows that I've gone to, I see other people with cameras and and camcorders, and I never see the footage. Like literally, uh, the the we'll go to a sh I'll go to a show way back then. I'll see four cameras. I don't see anyway like youtube like do you see a lot of footage of joshua fit for battle and welcome to plague year at all i feel like there's more joshua fit for battle stuff than uh welcome to plague year for some reason like welcome to plague year i know there's um a show from like delaware with malady and envy um joshua fit for battle and welcome to plague year has stuff on youtube from our shows at uh, all books in somerville south carolina um, our friend Thomas used to book shows there all the time and he was really awesome and nice and did a lot for everybody. Um, and there's like a really dark one from Cherry Hill, New Jersey of Welcome to Play here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish I, I just wish there was more footage out there. I'm sure people have them just sitting in the eight millimeters. This is such a pain in the ass to like actually, you know, transfer those onto 
whether you whether it's your computer or on a CD or or a, or a zip file or something like that because I had to buy an old camcorder just because mine died and I was trying to transfer stuff and um, I had to go to eBay because you can't even buy anything that plays eight millimeters now so I'm sure there's a lot of tapes that are just trapped on people's things they don't you know forgot about or whatever I'm very guilty of that I have a box of VHSC tapes from like Welcome to Plagueers entire 2004 tour. Wow. And like, I, I look at it like once a month and I'm like, I should go do something with this. <laughs> Never do, but like, there's some really good stuff on there. <laughs> uh, that would be awesome to, to see that stuff. Like I said, it's, it's such a pain though, whether you bring it to a, a company that does it, it gets super pricey or, uh, you know, if, if you don't have the things to transfer it, you know, and especially VHS, you need, you know, a VHS to, DVD burner or or a program in your computer where you can just connect to your computer and and download everything which takes a ton of space so it, it's I, I get it it's it's a it's a painful process but um, yeah I would, I would love to see some of that footage though one day <laughs> <laughs> all right um, my next question all-time favorite punk hardcore show you attended didn't play but just like you you saw and were blown away um, I feel like it would have to, the one thing that, the first thing that came to mind was, uh, I Hate You and Damnation AD right outside of Delaware in, in like Elkton, Maryland at this old, at this weird, like old restaurant club thing. And that, I was like probably 16 at the time. And I feel like that was just like, it kind of like set you on, set on like a path of like what I was really into or what like I enjoyed seeing live you know? yeah yeah now now back then was it like a kind of like a moshing thing because Damnation AD is kind of you know like you would see especially back in those days you you would see like moshing and stuff like that uh did you dabble in any of that when you were a kid or did you kind of just were you were like no that's not for me I tried to but it was just like you know it's just like it was useless you know, I, I was like my, it was like a risk, risk versus reward thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like I could have more fun potentially, but I could also have much less fun if this goes bad. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm guilty. I used to go in there a bunch back, back in the, the late eighties, like a meathead, you know what I mean? I was in there, I come home with battle scars. And, but then once I got a little older, I was, I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. It was just too yeah. much for me. But uh, yeah, I was, I was, you know, I was in there for a little bit. Um, my next question, what was the last movie you watched? Because I'm a huge movie guy. I, I always ask this question. Oh, man. I just watched a really awesome movie yesterday. Uh, Hunt for the Wilder People. Oh, I've seen that. That's, that's yeah. really good. Yeah, that's really good. It was awesome. It was so good. Now, do you watch a lot of movies or? Um... Not really. Um, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I... I generally just like, oh, The Office is on Netflix. Let me, just <laughs> Let me go through the entire series for the 10th time. Yeah, a lot of my friends are big, um, you know, they'll, they'll only watch donk, uh, documentaries, you know what I mean? Like, uh, they, they, they won't watch movies. So I'm huge in movies. I've always been. I, I watch as much as I can. Um, yeah. And so I always, I, I always ask. Um, I was a big comic guy for a while, um, and I always ask this, uh, DC or Marvel for you? I've never read a comic in my life. <laughs> or, or say the movies, uh, Batman or like say the Avengers or whatever, what like? Um, I've been watching WandaVision. I have too. Yeah, it's really cool. But like I said, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> and I see the first Batman movie. So I'll go with Batman. All right, uh, and you, and my last question: If you've been listening to hip hop uh, lately, what have you been listening to? Whether it be new or old, uh, you know, I'm always listening to '90s boom bap stuff. Uh, what have you been listening to, and what do you enjoy for for hip hop? Um, well, I've been listening to a lot of Billy Woods. Um, I just watched the uh, Wu Tang uh, series on Hulu, and so I've been revisiting all of like Ghostface and Raekwon stuff. Now, have you always listened to, well, obviously you were listening to Public Enemy and stuff like that. Uh, did you listen to the new Public Enemy album that they put out maybe a couple months ago? Did you, did you get into that yet? No, I didn't even know about it. 
yeah, they they released something new, maybe, uh, I would say six months ago, maybe, a brand new album. I, the, actually, uh, two of the, you know, uh, Beastie Boys are on, on it for, for a little bit, and uh, it, it's pretty good. I mean, I know they kick Flavor Flav out, so he's on there a little little bit, um, but it's it's worth checking out. It's pretty good. I love Chuck D. I love his messages, and, I, like, he, he's fun to watch on Instagram and Twitter as well, so. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't know anything about it, honestly. Um, but yeah, beyond that, it was just like, I was really into um, Bronze Nazareth for a while. Mm. Um, I don't know, kind of like started at the Woo and then just went out, you know? Yeah, yeah, like Killer Army and Sun, Sun, yeah, uh, yeah, Sun, yeah. Sons of Man and uh, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was hu I was huge into that too. Now, were you like a Tribe Called Quest and a De La Soul fan or, or was that like, not your thing um no the it's not that it's not my thing i didn't really listen to it much i know like when i first like i was probably like 17 when like i started like really getting into it again like that group the arsonists mm. um their first their first record like it's kind of what like set me off into like getting back into like hip-hop again it's so, like and like black star and stuff like that yeah arsonist that 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 first album is so good it is yeah yeah, yeah. And then the next one's not so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I was like, always go back. And then I'm like, oh, God, what happened? Exactly, yeah. Now, was, now uh, talking about arsonists was kind of, are you into like Cannibal Ox and stuff like that too? Or A little bit. Like I really liked Company Flow. Mm, company Flow. But really. I, didn't, I didn't like any of LP's like solo stuff. But I really like Run the Jewels. Yeah, Run the Jewels is so good. I, I mean, they were, LP's solo stuff was kind of hit and miss for me too as well um you know there was a couple songs that i like but like for the most part it wasn't you know i wasn't always going back to that at all it felt like too electronic for me yeah yeah exactly um all right i want to thank you so much i, I don't want to take too much of your time up uh i don't know what you got going on for sunday but i know you know family is important to me and, and i just like i'm super appreciative that you took the time out to talk to me about old stuff and, and new stuff. And um, if, if you want to say anything about your new bands or, or anybody that's watching, uh, ch check out your new bands, uh, let, let them know where they can listen to it or, or what you got going on. Uh, yeah, well, first, I just want to say thank you. This is really cool. Um, I really appreciate it. And yeah, so, you know, it's still technically currently playing a band called Dream Waste. We have stuff on Bandcamp. Um, and one of my super old bands, Echo Constructor, which is uh, Joe, who was the other vocalist for Welcome to, or for uh, Joshua Battle. He sang and did electronic stuff on it. Um, and then Mike Haley from Electric Human Project, he was in it too. And yeah, other than that, um, I see that there's people I know here. So thanks for watching and uh, listen to Tabs Out podcast. The really cool screamo podcast who who uh who does that um joe and mike and our our friend dave do it and is that on all platforms is that on like um spotify and and apple music and stuff like that can you listen to it anywhere i don't know about spotify but it's definitely on like the apple like i um podcast app and it's tab tabs out you said yeah tabs out yeah they um it's just like it's all cassette tape, like experimental music and metal and punk and stuff like that. Nice, nice. Yeah, sweet. Um, all right, Larry, thank you so much. Uh, I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to take up too much of your time, and and I'm super thankful that you did this. And and you know, reach out to me if you 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 know have any questions or or you need some from me. Uh, if you ever get into a band and you need to show up in New Hampshire once this thing ends, I I still set up shows, um, and. Um, Anything I can do to help you, I definitely will try. Cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was really, really nice to talk to you. All right. Um, yeah. Have a good night. Thanks. You too. Talk to you soon. All right. See ya.